Hello everybody, welcome to the Geekdom. Today I am going to review The Walking Dead Season 1. Um, so far that's all I've watched and I can't wait to go and uh, watch Season 2 and get this going and get all the episodes watched. I know I'm a little bit behind but I just barely finished watching it so um, that's that. And basically, uh, overall, I loved it. Um, zombies have always been something that have intrigued me. And I really do like when it gets like um, to the point where they start figuring out how the zombies came to be and whatnot, which they haven't done at all in season one. But um, I can't wait until they do. And um, I also like this just raw survival and how people cope when there's no structure and that's why zombies have always been interesting to me also zombies have always been like not scary to me like I always I like hate scary movies I hate being scared and yet zombies are have never been considered horror to me um I can watch zombies all day and not like bat an eyelash because <laughs> they don't scare me um but The Walking Dead's really 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 good um the acting, fantastic, um, especially like the main cast. Um, I don't know where they find these people, but they're really, really good. Um, the makeup for the zombies and the, I don't know what else they do. I don't know. Um, I know some of it's just, a lot of it's makeup. I don't know how they do like when their like pieces are cut off and, you know, just a torso. I don't know how they do that, but um, whatever they do, it's really, really good. Um, and the situations that they find themselves in just seem so real and I like I like how everyone kind of has a different reaction to uh, same situation and how people have to kind of figure out how they're going to solve these problems that arise it's just really really great um, now I'm just gonna cover a couple of the cast that I um, yeah that I know of because the this um, what I'm going by is my computer and they don't have every single character um, they just have like the main cast which kind of bothers me because there's a couple characters I wanted to touch on but they're not here for me to um, see or reference to and um, I'm going to as I talk about them I'll start remembering certain scenes or um, aspects that I wanted to cover about them so the first one is Rip, Rick Grimes who is a small town sheriff and he, um, he seems to be like the main hero, and a lot of the story seems to kind of revolve around him. Um, and he is your typical like good hero, and he seems to be like almost perfect. And he's also like the pillar of the group. He has to keep everyone going, and he'll put others before himself. And when it comes to certain situations, he is willing to do like the he tries to do the best option that will benefit um, everyone and if not everyone the majority and he just um, never really takes charge but he has like this natural leadership about him and so naturally people just um, go to him as the leader and that's the kind of hero he is um, he seems to be the very heroish type character and he is husband to Lori and um, while he was gone in a coma um, because he was in a coma while the zombie apocalypse happened um, she believed he was dead and decided to hook up with Shane so that causes some drama within itself Lori she is a strong woman whose main priority is her son even when her husband comes back it's still her son um, she is also a helpful kind of character. She doesn't like to sit around and wait for things to happen. If she can help somebody, she wants to be out there doing what she can to help them um, while taking care of her son as well. She won't put herself in danger because she knows she has to take care of her son and she won't put her son in danger, but she does still is willing to take more risks than other people are, if that makes any sense. So Shane, the one that Lori um, had a sexual relationship with when she thought Rick was dead, also believed Rick was dead. And so um, 
he got with Lori, which it makes sense because, you know, they're the only familiar faces. She knows that Shane was her husband's best friend. He knows that Lori was um, her husband's wife. I mean, yeah, was her husband's wife. <laughs> um, and so it makes sense that they got together. I mean, why not? Um, she's beautiful. He's handsome. Um, they know each other. And so, um, when Rick comes back, he, like, this just causes tension because Shane wasn't just anyone. Shane was Rick's best friend. And so, Shane is, like, an aggressive type leader. He takes charge, and he is more readily going to resort to violence um, to solve a situation. And he usually solves situations by force and by taking charge aggressively. And he's not bad. He's not evil. That's just the kind of leader that he is. And so um, when Rick comes in, um, not only is he um, struggling with the fact that he like has feelings and had sexual relationship with his best friend's wife, he also has to struggle with um, leadership control. Who's the leader now? They're both natural leaders um uh and um now they have to and they both have different ways of thinking when it comes to leadership and so they have to clash with that as well um and as for Lori and Shane's relationship when Rick came back Lori decided to cut it off completely with Shane and she made sure Shane knew and she decided to be wife to Lori, yet she decided, I mean, she decided to be wife to Rick, and, but she also decided not to tell Rick. So, um, things are getting a little crazy. And so, poor Shane, <laughs> he seems to have feelings for Lori. Lori, I don't know if she never had feelings for Rick and it was strictly sexual, or if she had feelings for Shane, but she's very composed and um, adamant about being Rick's wife that she doesn't even let any feelings for Shane um, surface. But Shane really, really does seem to uh, care for her. And like I said, he's an aggressive person. So he even like goes so far as to sexually assault her, which is terribly wrong. And um, he also, when he was in the forest with Rick, he points his gun at Rick while Rick had his back turned. And so we see Rick, I mean, um, Shane doing these pretty aggressive, sick things. I mean, he's thinking about killing his best friend. He's thinking about raping Lori. Um, just terrible, terrible things. And then we have um, Andrea, who is uh, another strong character. And honestly, she's just like a side character because other than that, I don't know what her goal is or if she's looking for someone or what's going on. Um, and she was with her sister Amy and we kind of just have them along um, at, and we get connected to them as side characters. And so when her sister Amy died, it was very tragic. And then she also... Um, kind of connects with Dale, who's the older man, and Dale has a purpose. He seems to be, like, the handyman, and he also seems to be the person who, like, sees everything. Um, he saw Shane pointing the gun at Rick's back, and he's just, he's just, like, always there when situations occur, and he, so he sees everything. Um, he's also, like, the handyman, like I said, so he's good at, like, tinkering and fixing things. Um, and, um, uh, that's what kind of pisses me off about Andrea is she doesn't really have any, like, qualities to add other than being another pair of arms, which can always help. Um, and, uh, we have Glenn, who was, like, a pizza delivery boy, and he's, like, the roguish type character. He's sneaky, he works better alone, um, he likes to get in fast and quick. And so that's him. And then we have Carl, which is the son of Rick and Lori. And also Shane was starting to take the role of father in Rick's absence. So that's another thing Shane has to kind of deal with is that he's no longer like the father figure of Carl. Um, I mean, of course, he could always be a male role model, but no longer can he like assume the role of father because that's Rick's job. 
And Carl's another character that doesn't really add much other than um, he's going to be the focus of Rick and Lori. He's going to be the number one. Um, we had to protect him sort of a deal. And then we have Daryl Dixon, and he has a little story around him because his brother was part of the group when Rick meets a lot of these other side characters. Um, he gets left behind by T-Dog, so that's going to start all sorts of drama. And so Daryl is very pissed that his brother got left behind, and so they have this whole story where they go to look for his brother who escaped and from what we see um, chances are he's still alive and so that's going to set up some drama in the future probably if um, Daryl's brother ever finds this group again he's going to have some serious problems with them because they left him behind basically and um, so Daryl kind of blames people for them leaving his brother behind but he um, kind of got the story and he isn't hating anybody he just participates and he's also kind of like the the brawn of the group he's like um good at killing good at aggressive work good at um the dirty work um especially when it comes to killing and then um Tigo dog's the one that left daryl's brother behind and so that's the only kind of drama i can see t-dog in so far and um he is another pair of arms, just like Andrea to me. Um, Carol had a little bit of story in this season with her husband, who was uh, abusive. And um, she has a little bit of a, you know, when she's confiding with the girls, um, she has to kind of find her strength in her abusive relationship because people don't really know how abusive relationships work and how, um, you know, the man makes everything about him and he makes it to the point where the woman feels like she'd be nothing without him. So she kind of has to struggle with that. But then her husband dies and now her main priority is Sophia and she no longer has to worry about her husband abusing her anymore, which is interesting. Um, so we could see that she was kind of like a more timid character, so we'll see how her strength grows and comes about. Um, I know she's, she's very strong when it comes to her daughter, and um, just the fact that she's been able to go through this um, shows how strong of a character she is, as well as um, a lot of these other characters. But for a lot of these characters, such as Andrea... T-Dog, Carl, Carol, Sophia, um, they don't really have more to them, so they're kind of just there for right now. I don't know if they're going to be elaborated on in the future seasons. We shall see. And there's also this other guy, and I don't really know names, which is why I have the guide right here on my computer, um, and he seemed to have prophetic dreams. Um, he was the one shoveling graves and digging graves, and then when the zombies attacked, he remembered why he was digging holes. It was because they were going to be graves. And when he got bit and he was having fever dreams, um, he saw like this creature, um, this very scary zombie creature. And so I don't know if this is uh, foreshadowing that there's going to be a creepy zombie creature that is going to be more evolved than the other zombies and going to be a big problem for them, or if he's going to be that creepy zombie creature, um, I have no clue. So um, I just was interested in him because he was having prophetic dreams, um, something I was not expecting actually. And so I was interested in him and then he went and had to die. Well, we didn't see him die, but he got bit and then he had to be left behind. Um, of his own choice. So that's that. And um, I was a little upset when they went to the, um, what is it, CDC, EDC, something. Um, this building where um, they were like experimenting and trying to find the cure to the uh, zombie disease or whatever it was. And we kind of get more information on how the zombies become animated 
and become the Walking Dead. And so that's that. But I don't really see how they didn't cover how the zombies actually came to be in the first place, which is what I really am dying to know. And um, also there's military everywhere, and yet the military was not able to contain the zombies. And um, a lot of dead military and... So it doesn't look like they were bit or anything because I don't see any walking military men around um, except for the one in the tank. I don't think I've seen any military men, but they just look dead, like they've just died there, um, and but they didn't get reanimated as zombies. So um, I don't know. I want to know what the military's involvement is as well. So hopefully I find out a little bit more in Season 2, and that's that. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Bye.